Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. As always, joined by Tony Hager. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, expectations are high for the U.S. Open in Las Vegas this week. Big names like Taylor and Dake and Burroughs, Ramos are among the many to hit the stage. USA Wrestling's Richard Emmel caught up with U.S. National Freestyle coach Bill Zadick to discuss the outlook of the men's freestyle program heading in to the 2020 Olympic cycle, the world team selection process, and the potential for Team USA moving forward. Okay, with National Coach Bill Zadek, uh, U.S. Open this week. And, uh, yep. Obviously, this is this is sort of the first big domestic event in the new quad. Um, talk about the the you know with the new quad, what comes with it. We have a bunch of new faces coming in, and and uh, you know it's just going to be a new thing. Guys dropping out, guys coming in. What do you expect to see? Yeah, so um, there's always some changeover every every quadrennium, and in, in, uh, uh, you know th this year there's not a ton as much turnover. Um, there's a, there's a few guys that are that are moving on to you know moving on from their competitive careers uh, you know it looks like Tervel is, is probably moving on um, and then we have some new faces but we do have a lot of new faces coming up uh, some younger guys and s some big excitement so um, this US Open it'll be an exciting event to see who emerges who these young guys that have been coming up and doing well in the developmental uh, World Championships and in other events, and uh, you know, coming coming off the uh, NCAA tournament here just you know five weeks ago or so, uh, I think we're going to see some really exciting young guys coming out of the NCAA ranks that are going to make some noise this year at the U.S. Open. Can you talk about the the bite of the finals a little bit and why you know you think it's a good idea or why you like that way to select the team? Yeah, so um, with the medalists, um, what, what I feel is uh, it's an incentive for proven performers. We know these guys uh, can win medals on the international level, and as a national coach, that's, that's what my job is, is to put people out there that can win medals and win gold medals. And so we want to provide that incentive. Um, with uh, the U.S. Open champ, you know, the, the U.S. Open is significant. It's a, it's a major event, right? Open tournament, you're going to, you know, have anywhere from maybe as little as the high 20s or low 30s to maybe 40 or 50 in a bracket, depending on, on, on where you fall and what weight category. So uh, th those winners are going to have to come through a hard-fought tournament. And so earning that buy is, is an opportunity to give them a leg up and a reward for coming through a tough field, but it's also not picking the team. It's, uh, you know, we've had several guys, I believe, you know, like probably our most recent is Tony Ramos in uh, 2014, came through the mini tournament and then made, made the world team in that year. And so, so it, it can be done. And so uh, part of it is to provide some incentive and some reward to uh, our proven performers. And, and, and the other side is to give an opportunity for uh, maybe a, on paper an underdog to come through and still have a, a good shot to make the team if, 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 they're, if they're proficient, right? Again, mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, there's a high level of, uh, of technical demand there to, to be good enough to to come through a field like that. And so, uh, you know, I'm open-minded. I, I know we know how other countries do it. We know that uh, there's other countries that have very good teams. Um, they have different societies and a lot of, a lot of uh, situations, you know, Russians and Eastern Europeans and Iranians. The, the coach has more influence to pick the team and actually select athletes. I don't know if that necessarily is great in our culture in our society, but um, I do believe in uh, dangling the carrot so there's incentive for guys to compete hard and that our process is reflective of what it takes to win a medal. So our process is set up um, so that somebody is going to have to win four or five tough matches in a row to make the team, which is exactly what you're going to have to do to win a medal at the World Championships or the Olympic Games. You're going to have to win four or five tough matches in a day. And, uh, and so that's kind of the philosophy behind our process. Up next, Hager gives his picks to win the U.S. Open thanks to Fairway Food Stores.
right now. Get a free two liter with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Okay, so it's the biggest wrestling event since NCAAs. It's the U.S. Open. I'm pumped to see our best athletes compete, Tony. Hit me with your favorites, the must-sees. Well, let's start at 57 kilograms. It's hard to bet against Tony Ramos on American soil. Dan Dennis really shocked the wrestling world coming back from off the mountains to, to knock off Tony Ramos. But, you know, so he's a he's a big favorite here. Nico Mega Lutis, though, you know, he's been wrestling lights out. So he's been wrestling on the international scene, take up, take down some of the the best competition right. that we've seen internationally. So Tony Ramos, Nico Mega Lutis, there's lots of guys at 57. So, But all eyes probably going to be on Tony Ramos. What about Logan Stieber at 61? He's out since he has a bye, right? He's got a bye to the World Team Trials Finals in June. Who do you like at this weight? Now, this weight class will have some new faces um, at the top, but uh, not names that you probably haven't, you know, heard of i guess you know jason ness is like a guy that's massive at this weight class really kendrick maple joe cologne now has a new home at grandview has a little bit more competition in the room so it's gonna be interesting to see how he's transitioned um so i think uh, those three names will be guys that will contend for this spot all right frank molinero shocked the world when he took the olympic spot at 65 could he win the trials and not win the open i i don't think so i mean i i feel like i'm always picking against uh Frank Molinaro. Yeah, what's up with that? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm always, I am, I am always going against him. But Zane Rutherford is going to be in this class. Uh, Jordan Oliver, um, also, is going to be in this class. And I, I just feel like, you know, now is his time. You know, the Metcalf has always been kind of like in his head, and he's gone now. So Jordan Oliver, I think, is going to maybe uh, ruffle some feathers. But Zane Rutherford could be the guy that's going to knock off Molinaro. Teammates, Pennsylvania. So it'll be, it'll be interesting. All right, seven kilos has a big favorite. That's James Green. Can anybody challenge him? Hey, Jason Nolf is registered, a big name, obviously, in NCAA wrestling. Jason Chamberlain is there, Ooh. too, as well. So uh, James Green is, I think, it's this is really his to lose. I mean, I'd be shocked if Nolf came in there and knocked him off. Green is this. This is his weight class where he feels comfortable. So I'm obviously picking James Green, big favorite here. Chamberlain, watch for Chamberlain to uh, light some fireworks out there. 74 kilos, the big one. Burroughs, Dake, likely to meet. Who are you taking? Man, you you want to pick you want to pick Burroughs here, but you have to think when is Kyle Dake's time to take him down? I mean, he's going from 86 downs, and he's going to be huge. So another new weight class for him. You know, he's tested Burroughs before multiple times, and uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm hesitant though to pick Dake just because of just the storyline. I think Burroughs you know comes back from after the Olympics and refocuses and just gets the job done. Right. Jordan Burroughs. Jordan. Okay, I was waiting. It took you what five minutes to arrive yeah. at that. Decision, Jordan Burroughs. All right. 96 kilos, wide open, no Kyle Snyder, no Jake Varner. Who you got here? This is a weird weight class for me. I mean, Kyvin Gatson's in there. He, I believe he's out training with the Sunkiss kids now. And, you know, JT Felix, he's there. Justin Kilgore um, also. Um, that's, a, that's a guy that you need to look out for, Kilgore. I mean, I think... Uh, you're saying Dustin Kilgore, right? Dustin Kilgore. Right. So I think biggest biggest reason of our best... Reason why I'm picking um, Kyvin Gadsden, I think, uh, based off of where these are guys are going to fall in the in the, uh, the tournament bracket, I'm going to pick Kyvin Gadsden. And he's been training at elevation as Kilgore. I think he's out at the Air Force uh, Academy out in Colorado Springs. All right, sad to see Travel Delegnev not strapping up the singlet again, but we have some wrestlers ready to fill his shoes. Yeah, well, it's going to be tough to fill those shoes. Delegnev has just really owned this spot for so long, but a guy that I feel is 
primed and ready, Wisdowski, Nick Wisdowski, NC State. Um, he took down Olympic silver medalist earlier. He, t- he ended up losing to him um, earlier here, the most recent uh, matchup between those two. But, um, you know, Zach Ray is a guy at this weight class that yeah. always seems to be kind of on the bubble but just can't get it done in international competition. Not flashy, doesn't take risky moves. Don't forget also Tony Nelson's now at this weight class. So there's guys like Don Bradley, back. Bobby Telford could be in the mix. So the semifinals of this weight class is probably going to be the most exciting to watch. Oh, it's going to be fun. Hey, we got to take a quick time out. Look for our continued coverage from the U.S. Open on TakedownWrestle.com. Up next, Isaiah Martinez speaks out for the first time since losing in the NCAAs. This portion brought to you by Powerade. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. What's up guys, I wanna tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind, of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, checking them out. Pureandcleansports.com. In his first interview since the NCAA's two-time national champ Isaiah Martinez talked to Track Wrestling's Andy Hamilton recently about his junior season and looking forward to the freestyle year and what's ahead as a senior at Illinois. We haven't talked, you haven't done any interviews, he said, since no, the NCAA championships. Um, given a month to, to kind of reflect on things uh, on the season, uh, the NCAA championships, uh, what are prominent thoughts in your mind now? Um, uh, I mean, I had I had a I had a good season for the most part. Uh, the season went went without a hitch, so it was it was a good season. Uh, at the NCAA, it probably didn't have the best tournament. Uh, you know, losing the finals was was hard was hard to deal with. But uh, you know, it, it, given some time and and you know reflected back on why you know maybe why the result happened, what what I did wrong, or you know things I can correct. So. Um, you know, my head's in the right place, and, I, and I'm looking forward to uh, next season already. What's the last month been like when you, you think about it? And, and you know, is that, is that something you've, you've thought about that match time after time after time? Or, uh, or have you turned the page from it? Um, I don't know if I'll ever, you know, you don't, I don't know if you ever turn the page from something like that. These are, these are important events. These are big-time moments. Uh, but this past month has been real busy with school, trying to um, just catch up and, and um, you know, get ready to graduate. Uh, so, I mean, it, you know, dealing with school after the Nationals has kind of helped just keep my mind busy. Um, I, I've, I've continued to train. I took about a week off and then uh, continue to train. And so uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, continue to train during the summer and get better and, and you know, hopefully do some freestyle. You mentioned that, that you've kind of done an evaluation of it. What, what did you learn? Uh, you know, I think, again, I, I, had, I had a pretty good season. Yeah. I mean, I was undefeated all the way to the National Finals. Um, you know, I think, you know, I, I definitely did some things wrong 
uh, but you know he also had a phenomenal tournament. Uh, you know, Vincenzo Joseph, he he had a great tournament, and uh, you know it was it was it was a combination of a lot of things. You know, I had a, I had a bad tournament, bad match, and he wrestled a phenomenal tournament, phenomenal match. So. Uh, you know, things like that have it's life. They happen. Sometimes they don't. They don't uh, go the way you want them to. But I, I mean, you know, I, I feel I feel good about it because you know something great always comes out of things like this. So I, I'm um, really looking forward to um, you know what's next. Yeah, you tweeted. Uh, I think the next morning, nobody, or maybe that night, even nobody gets out of this game unscathed. I think were the words that, yeah. that you wrote. Um, you were halfway to four. Yeah. Uh, is that hard to let go of? Uh I mean, yeah, yes and no, yes and no. Uh, you know, I've always been a guy that I think uh, set myself up for the, for the biggest goals, the grandiosa, the you know, the finale. But um, you know, I'm also very human, so uh, I think it happens. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be moving forward, and I think I'll be even better next year. Yeah, human nature is uh, maybe the alarm clock goes off or the, the alarm goes off. Yeah. Sometimes when, when we don't get the, the results that, that we want um, in any walk of life, uh, how can this make you better going forward? What, what kind of things can well, this I help mean, you with? Well, I mean, it just, uh, it's going to make me sharper. I, uh, you know, it's going to make sure I leave no stone unturned, uh, absolutely no stone unturned, because, you know, that's typically my style is I do everything I possibly can to achieve the result that I that I want, and um, you know now I'm just going to be even sharper than ever, hungrier than ever, and you know more disciplined in everything I do, and you know waking up every single morning with a new kind of you know with a new kind of fire. So um, I'm excited. 165 again next year? Yeah, most likely. Yeah, I don't see myself moving from there. What about uh, freestyle this spring? Well, summer? Um, I took a week off after after the nationals and um, I came back and we kind of reassessed you know what, what what I wanted to do after nationals and I definitely did want to wrestle freestyle but I didn't quite feel that I was I was gonna be prepared you know technically uh, mentally for for the open so I will probably be at Northern Plains in about a month and then hopefully at the trials and, and you know make a run for the team what are you going to work on right now I mean what are what are things that uh, you feel are, are at the top of the list of things that, that you want to get accomplished here before Northern Plains and, and making a run at the World Team Trials. Uh, just just getting getting as good as possible in, in freestyle. Um, that's the new focus. Um, you know, parterre. Uh, you know, transitioning attacks uh, feet to back on on, uh, on my shots. So I'm um, just trying to trying to transition to a freestyle mindset, um, an attack mindset, I guess. Uh, I mean, I've always had an attack mindset, but in freestyle, you know, points go up so much faster. So uh, I think being being ready right off the whistle is, is a big deal in freestyle. So I'm kind of uh, molding myself to, to get ready for international competition. All right, Tony, takeaways from Imar's interview. I mean, this is pretty much how you would expect Isaiah Martinez to respond. I mean, he's got a level head on his, his shoulders, I feel like. Always really cool, calm, and collective. And I think, you know, freestyle, you know, will be interesting for him because yep. he, he's kind of a guy for me that I feel like has got a really good defense, but he's not willing to take that big risky move, not a ton of firepower when it comes to his offense. He does when he pulls the trigger, so he's just going to have to change that mindset from folk style to freestyle, and I'm not sure if he's there yet. And go on the offense. Sometimes our defeats prepare us for bigger things in the future. Everybody in the sport of wrestling has a weakness. It's proven out week in, week out, every match. All right, time for a quick timeout right here on Global Wrestling News. Up next, quick hits from around the sport brought to you by Cookies Barbecue Sauce. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. 
Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. For the fifth consecutive year, Helen Maroulis will be in action at the Beat the Streets event in New York City. Competing at her new weight of 58 kilos, Maroulis will face 2014 world champ Chiho Hamada of Japan. Hamada holds a 2-1 record against Maroulis, including a 6-2 win in their most recent matchup at the 2014 World Championships. You know, Maroulis turned the corner after losing to Hamada. She went on a 64 straight match win streak. Obviously, she won the World Championships, she won the Olympics, so um, you know, her, her offense is there. Whether she stays at the, her old weight class or the new weight class, she's going up a little bit, going to be healthier, I think. So I think this is going to be Maroulis's to lose, obviously. Uh, she's got the confidence to do it. She's one of the most powerful women we have in our sport right All right. now. All right, with Maroulis going up, is there anybody that can dethrone her at the U.S. Open? Yeah, I don't know. This this class has some new and old wrestlers. Kelsey Campbell, she's still around wrestling at top top of her level. She 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 is somebody that has the experience to take down Helen. Kayla Miracle is a Ooh. she you know, she's a new talent. Um, but uh, I don't think anybody can can keep up with Helen's offense. She just she has some of the. I mean, not a lot of women wrestlers take the risk, take the offensive shots. Helen does it, and that's the reason why she is an Olympic champ. All right, you know, Kayla Miracle. One of those to watch for sure, and it's her birthday today. So a big shout out and a happy birthday to Kayla Miracle. Virginia Tech senior Zach Epperly will not compete for the Hokies next year. The two-time All-American will graduate next month and has accepted a position on the coaching staff at Cave Spring High School in Virginia. Yeah, this is a big, big surprise for me. I mean, he has the ability to go to graduate school. She got another year to compete, but. You know, not everybody has the same dreams as maybe you think that they have, I guess. So I think, you know, maybe his mindset is with, you know, with Dresser moving on, maybe it's time for him to move on, turn the page in his career, and he just wants to get there. He's graduating, he's done with school, and uh, he just wants to get into his, you know, coaching career. Is it possibly just wants to be done with school for a while? Well, uh, school and wrestling, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a huge um, toll on the body, so maybe he just be, wants to be done. All right, they were already losing Ty Walsh and Joey Dance to graduation. Now you add Epperly, that's a lot of points to make up. They will absolutely have to start rebuilding. They need to concentrate on their red shirts and their incoming recruits. I've been hearing some rumors that we might be seeing some transfers. One big name, but uh, it's not 100% sure yet. So Virginia Tech, they definitely need to you know, put put a lot of stock into keeping those red shirts and incoming recruits. All right, the NCAA Rules Committee has recommended several changes. Let's start with the video review process. I think we can all agree that officials should not be evaluating their own calls. Yeah, this is a no-brainer. Now, if the, the person reviewing the, the official's call is also official, I think that is going to be a big problem as well because a lot of these officials, they travel together, they're friends, so we need to have a third-party company come in there that don't have any relationships with these officials um, to, to make this happen. Otherwise, it, we're going to be in the same kind of problem we are. I mean, the same official isn't overturning his own call, but it's still some guy that you shake hands, you know, have a drink with, go out to dinner with. It's just, it's just still different. All right. Optional headgear, good or bad? 100%, I think this should be an option. I think the headgear really, until they have a way to combat concussions, they're really kind of pointless in my mind because when you're tugging on the headgear, it actually it, it's worse on your ears. I, I didn't have cauliflower ear until I got to college because you know, we were mandated to wear the headgear in practice, and it made my ears flame up. So maybe it's because I got, took a beating. I'm not really sure. But it seemed like it was almost made it worse. Oh, so don't undersell get yourself. You were good. All right, this one's a little harder for me to understand. Penalizing wrestlers who violate weight management protocols. I mean, whatever that means, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this is a... Uh, when in wrestling, this is kind of the biggest gray area is at the beginning of the year when you certify for your weight class, you have to take a, um, a test to test your urine, and that is the really kind of the biggest hack. I mean, because you can go into the restroom, you have to 
you know, pee in a cup. You can dip your cup into the water of the of the urinal or the toilet, whatever, and then pee in it, and it makes your water obviously have more, uh, you know, water in it. So you're, you're hydrated. Your, your urine you're, has more water. You're deceiving yeah. your, your urine. So that is a big one. But now a, they have got some kind of ways to test that. I'm not sure how that is, but um, if they have that figured out, you're going to get a big no, no, no. You're going to get fined. You're going to get booted from the team. You're going to, yeah, it's going to be, it's not going to be good. So obey the rules. How about the saunas and rubber suits? That was a big deal when I was at Iowa. So what have you heard? Yeah, I mean, there's, this is still a no-no, obviously. I think the biggest thing that, you know, with this rule, coaches really have always kind of just, if I don't know about it, it's okay. Um, but you, they, if they literally have any kind of idea this is going on, now they are going to get penalized. They're going to be ineligible. They can't be on the on the mat coaching, probably in the practice room as well. So this is a, an administrator as well, not just the coaches, the administrators too. So this is definitely something they're going to have to police. All right, Tony, we're out of time. Tune in next week for a full breakdown of the U.S. Open and World Team Trials. I'm Scott Casper along with Tony Hager and all of us here in Des Moines. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for Global Wrestling News.